Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am especially excited to be here today because I am here with my friend and colleague, Erica Graham, and I have the great pleasure of introducing her to the world right now. Um, I feel like maybe she just was born the way I just said that. I don't mean it that way. (laughs) Introducing her brilliance to the world. Um, And I'm going to tell you a little bit about her before I allow her to speak. I have her muzzle right now. So Erica Graham is the lead virtual design assistant and owner operator of Erica Graham Consulting. She started her entrepreneur journey in January 2019, graduating from the prestigious virtual expert training program and becoming a certified virtual expert in July 2020. She is a kitchen and bath remodel expert offering kitchen and bath cabinet design administrative services such as email, material sourcing and procurement, invoicing and concept board creation to her interior design and remodeler clients. Creating beautiful spaces is her jam and she loves to support the industry in that manner. Erica lives in Mesa, Arizona with her husband, William, and they have been married for 27 years. Welcome, Erica. Thank you, Kathy. It's so nice to be here with you today. It's nice to be here with you too. So if you're not watching this on YouTube, I just want to describe something to you. First of all, I am in my sweatshirt because I got cold. So I threw my sweatshirt on, still have my tiara on, of course. And I look a little pale, like, you know, I had a migraine yesterday, so I look a little pale. And I said to Erica, Erica, did you do your own makeup or did you have a professional do it? And she's like, I don't have any makeup on. (laughs) You have to go look. I, I'm telling you right now, she looks like she has had professional makeup done. And, <laughs> and she's now she's blushing a little bit because I'm talking about her makeup. So Erica, how are you so lucky just to have this naturally beautiful skin and perfect color lips and perfect eyebrows? And all? I'm, I know I'm describing this in detail, but maybe people aren't listening. And I'm going to tell you, I'm jealous. <laughs> it's my Hispanic heritage. That's the, uh, what I attribute my beautiful coloring to. But um, honestly, Kathy, I'm too lazy to wear makeup, so I don't even bother, <laughs> you know? I hear you. <laughs> so this I'm work tell you from right home. Th- go ahead. Nobody could put makeup on you that would make you look as beautiful as you look uh, right Thank you. I appreciate that. But, you know, yeah. this work from home environment really suits me because I don't have to wear makeup. Woohoo! So when you worked um, outside the home, uh, well, let's just start with that before I ask other questions. So tell us a little bit about your background, where you came from, how you dared to leap into your entrepreneurial journey. Sure. Um, So I I guess I could start at the very beginning. Um, I'm a four-year Navy veteran. I joined uh, the U.S. Navy when I was 18, Um, spent four years in the military, and met my husband, and um, I got out after my eldest son was born. Um, So in all of those, those years that led me up to um, working in several different industries, including uh, working at a uh, the Welk Resort out in California. I worked at the uh, I worked in the kitchen in the back as uh, one of the prep chefs, um, and I wasn't totally crazy about working in such a fast paced environment with two little kids and a husband gone on deployment. So that kind of led me to kind of be at home and dabbled a little bit in a few MLMs. And um, when my husband came back and was finally stationed stateside, um, I kind of went back out into the workforce, um, worked at a uh, property management company um, very briefly. And again, that just didn't suit me. Um, I worked again, I was at home with my kids for a few years, homeschooling for a little while. 
and then finally, when they decided they were ready to go back to school, um, I started working at Lowe's and that's where my career at Lowe's started uh, back in 2006, as a matter of fact. Um, it, working at Lowe's was totally new for me. I knew nothing about home improvement. Um, you know, I had dabbled a little bit with a few tools here and there, but nothing, you know, remotely resembling anything remodel or anything, you know, home improvement per se. Um, so in the years that I worked at Lowe's, I worked in different departments where I was promoted several different times to um, my very last high paid position was as a kitchen and bath remodel specialist. Um, and that's kind of where my passion for kitchen and bath design was born. I didn't know that I had it. I was always creative, but I didn't know I had that passion. Um, so I was in that position for probably a good four years before the company decided that I, it was no longer a profitable position to have in the stores. Um, so they eliminated the position and with it, my job. Um, mm. I was offered positions in the store, um, but I already had a prestigious position where I was able to go into clients' homes and help them with their vision for their new spaces. Why would I want to go back on the sales floor, putting away freight, getting up at the crack of dawn to be at work to downstock and just be on those hard concrete floors? That's when I decided I needed something different. I was ready to start my own business. Um, and in that research phase is where I found your five-day challenge. Um, as a matter of fact, it was a live five-day challenge and I attended that. And, you know, at first I thought, what is a virtual assistant? And when I attended your five-day challenge, it just totally answered all my questions. And I thought I could totally do this. Like I have skills that I could bring to the table. I could totally do this. And mm -hmm. much to my husband's surprise, I'm not one of those that just kind of leaps into something new right away. I, it takes me a little bit of time to warm up to something before making that decision. Well, let me tell you, Kathy, after your five-day challenge, I was ready to jump all in. I'm like, sign me up right now. Take my money. <laughs> Woo Come on. Yeah. So that's kind of where my journey into the virtual assistant world started. And... Erica, you know, you've been around me for a long time now, and you know how I manage those five-day challenges, and I know you said that one was live. I do record them now, and not all of them are live. I only do live ones occasionally, but when I do the live ones, I always notice certain people that stand out, and you were one of those people that just stood out from the crowd. And I was just like, we got to get Erica involved in this. She is amazing. Well, that explains so, why you sent the, the breakthrough <laughs> specialist that you did to call me and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. That's right. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I have a little bit of a tickle in my throat and I'm sucking on a mint right now to try to keep from coughing on you mm -hmm. and I almost choked on the mint oh no <laughs> so that obviously didn't work <laughs> so I have a question for you sure. which is when you were thinking about all right I'm going to start my own business this VA this virtual assistant thing sounds interesting were you at all fearful of that was there anything that you thought, oh, this is a little scary, or were you like, I'm so excited about this, I'm not even scared. Well, how'd you feel? I was I was a little. I'm not going to say scared. I was a little, there was a little bit of trepidation because I did not know what a virtual assistant was. I had heard the term. I had read a, a, a lot of things on it. I had seen a lot of things on it, but I had never actually gotten a true sense of what a virtual assistant did until that five-day challenge until you presented it to 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 the group that that week um really you know and I can't say that I was really afraid that was the only time in my life where I wasn't afraid to jump into something 
Why, why do you think that was? I think because for several years while I was still working at Lowe's, I, I had wanted more for myself and out of my life than just working retail and getting yelled at by customers. Um, I didn't, I, I was, I mm. was, that sounds I was, horrible. You know, I was hoping that there was something more out there that I mm -hmm. could do for myself. Um, so when when this virtual assistant thing fell into my lap, I was like, I got to jump on this. I can't I can't dawdle on this like I have every other decision I've ever made in my life. So that is so interesting that you feel like you've analyzed, you were analyzing and taking it slowly on other decisions, but you jumped into this one because mm -hmm. um, I really see you as somebody that just goes and goes and goes. You're like, ready, let's go. Like joining the Navy. Oh I mean, joining the Navy at 18, how, was that scary? It was a little bit scary, yes. Um, but at the same time, it was kind of exciting. Um, I was not ready to go to college and my mom and dad were pushing me to go to college. Um, and I just was not ready. And when the recruiter came to our school, um, I got to talking to him. And of course, you know, they promise you everything under the sun to get you to sign up, which he did and I fell for it. But you know, at the end of the day, joining the military was a serious growing up experience. Yeah, serious that. growing up experience. So yeah. I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even think about it that much signing up mm -hmm. my mom was surprised mm -hmm. she's like I can't believe that you're actually doing this um but then what parent isn't you know what I mean especially when you uh -huh. don't come from a long line of military people um yeah. and I'm a first generation American citizen so it's like uh, -huh. uh what are you doing <laughs> yeah you know? yeah so yeah well I think you know this um our son, Tony, and his son, our grandson, Anthony, they both joined the Navy. And we were thrilled because much like you were talking about, Tony did not want to go to college. It just wasn't something that he was interested in and he couldn't figure out what he did want to do. And when he told us he joined the Navy, we were so excited. And then um, his son, Anthony, he was struggling with the same thing. He actually did sign up for college and they just really, I mean, just one semester and was like, this is not going to work for me. What if I join the Navy? And we're just so proud of both of them. And Tony's now a chief in the Navy and Anthony just got his first, what do they call them? Assignments? I don't think that's exactly what it is. Yes. Uh, he's in San Diego. <gasps> oh, how lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I my husband and I were in that area for 22 years. Oh, wow. With the Marine yeah, Corps. I love that so, yeah. Oh, uh, so your husband was in the Marine Corps, not mm -hmm. the Navy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought maybe you met him in the Navy. Well, I mean, we we were stationed both together at a naval installation and there was a small contingent of Marines at this Navy base. Um, and that's where he and I met. Mm. Mm-hmm romance romance yes anthony i think's already had like three girlfriends two of them he wanted to marry i'm not kidding you i mean the boy is i call him a boy he's six four and you know he's he's a young man but uh yeah he i think he's gonna ask everybody he every woman he meets to marry him for a little while here <laughs> <laughs> playing the field <laughs> oh i hope he plays the field for a little while longer um so when you think about the difference between because now you have your a virtual assistant business and you um, are even higher level than a virtual assistant you're a you are a virtual expert you are a certified virtual expert and you are the lead virtual design assistant and i kind of read off the stuff that you do for people but can you talk just a little bit more about how you you know, what kind of customers you help and how you really help them. Sure. So uh, I lead virtual design assistant and, and I wanted to call myself a virtual design assistant as opposed to a virtual expert because my target market, um, and I could go into a lot of that, but 
um, I'm, I'm appealing to my target market by calling myself a virtual design assistant as opposed to a virtual design expert. Um, so the type of client that I help are interior designers and kitchen and bath remodel professionals. Um, and the way that I assist them is by helping them, one, if they don't have anybody on their staff to create kitchen and bath cabinet layouts. So I'm proficient in using the platforms to create these beautiful kitchens that you see a lot of times on like Pinterest or HGTV or, you know, you, you have to have a certain knowledge of that type of, of platform in order to create these beautiful kitchens and bathrooms. Um, and a lot of times these, these professionals don't have the bandwidth, what they call the bandwidth or the time in order to create these, these spaces and these platforms because there is there's, there's some, there's some, um, there's a lot of knowledge involved in using these platforms. It's not, especially with cabinetry, you don't, it's not like playing with Legos with cabinetry. You have to be pretty exact. The math has to be exact. Um, you know, and there's things like appliances that you have to take into consideration. Um, so a lot of times the knowledge isn't there and they rely on a professional that's dealt with it. It has experience with it in order for their projects to go flawlessly. Um, so that, that is just one of the services that I offer. Um, the other service that I offer, um, they're more administrative. So if, if, say, for example, an interior designer needs help sourcing sp specific materials for a kitchen or a bath, or even just an interior design um, project that they're, you know, redecorating a living room or a dining room, whatever, um, I can help them source those items. Um, I can help get the pricing that they need for those items. For tile, mm. if they need that stuff ordered, I can order it for them. Um, having been in the kitchen and bath industry, I know a lot of the uh, different vendors that I could reach out to for, you know, whatever pricing they're looking for to get them the best deal that they can get so they can make money off of those projects as well. Yeah. So you have, let me see if I have this right. You have the network. Mm -hmm. You have the connections, yes. you know, the lingo, mm -hmm. you have all of that knowledge so that you can reach out to people, get the resources that are needed, get them at a price that is going to work for your clients mm -hmm. and the, your interior design and remodeling clients, they can do what they really enjoy. Yes, that is correct. And what is it that they really enjoy? Well, they really enjoy one, the creative part, which is working with their clients to get their clients visions. That is what they really, that's their passion. That's the reason why they got into the business. They don't want to get into the little minutia of having to go source materials or pick up the phone and call a vendor to find out where their delivery is and so on and so forth. Those are the things that typically somebody on staff would take care of, but if they don't have that time to hire anybody or the the resources in terms of money to hire someone to be there full time that's where I come in yeah so as soon as you said staff I thought they have to have like full-time employees that do this oh no 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 I don't want to pay that much if I was them is that it, it is that right correct Correct. I mean, a lot of times, yeah. you know, in some of the bigger outfits, they do have full time staff in a building that require things like computers and, you know, the resources to make all of that stuff work in order to make those phone calls and, you know, track deliveries and get pricing and, you know, check for back orders. And right now, because everything's so crazy because of COVID, you know, there's a lot of materials that are on back order. And why would you pay somebody full time, um, full, full time wages to sit in an office to, to not really yeah. do what they would normally be doing? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, oh, I totally see what you're saying. That's kind of, I, I didn't I even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, well, another thing that I was thinking about was with COVID, there's new challenges 
Um, but is there also like an increased interest in people who are having to stay home all the time to oh, actually get their homes remodeled? Mm -hmm. Yes, the interior designers and remodelers have seen, an, have seen an uptick in business because of all of the families that have had to stay home from work. Um, so they're seeing their, their spaces in a new light because they're now working and they're homeschooling their kids out of their home. So a lot of kitchens are being remodeled because of COVID, as a result of COVID. Yeah. So if there's interior design and remodelers out there whose business has increased mm -hmm. and you need somebody to do that back end work, I don't know, back end is the right word, the, yeah. re the sourcing <laughs> work, any, all the stuff that you do, um, Erica, so do you have like a minimum amount that you require that somebody work with you? Like, do they have to work with you 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week? Or, you know, how do you work with people? Well, because I, I am pretty proficient and efficient with the work that I do, <clears throat> I typically require at least a 10 hour minimum per month um, for the administrative things, for the actual kitchen and bath design with the cabinetry. Um, really, I don't have a minimum with those. those. Those are so time consuming as it is. It doesn't matter what size a kitchen, um, you know, a 10 by 10 kitchen. We think even you know. a smaller kitchen could yeah. be harder because I yes. have a small kitchen and it's and those, hard. <laughs> yes. And those are, those are pretty, uh, that there's, they're challenging because you, you're trying to fit things into these spaces. And a lot of times you're having to make things work. So, <clears throat> You know, I don't really have a minimum for for those those projects per se, um, but for the others at a ten hour minimum a month. Okay, so um, a, so if they want administrative work like email management, invoicing, that kind of administrative work, then it's a minimum of ten hours a month. A month, mm -hmm. not a week. A right. month. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. <laughs> We're not talking about, you know, lots and lots of hours that you're going to uh, invest in there, 10 hours a month. That's really awesome. And then the other work that you do, the design work, that is on a by project basis, which I think Correct. is just excellent. Correct. So think about how much money you are saving these mm -hmm. interior design and remodelers from having to have even a part-time staff. Mm -hmm. I mean, even a part-time staff the doing social media. Do you You're do paying, social media? Yes, I do. I do. Oh for my these, goodness, for I these. didn't have that in my list. <laughs> well, it's it's a service that I just recently added. Um, I've been doing social media for two other clients that are not in the industry. Um, and I know the industry so well that I know what what they're looking for, who they're trying to reach. So why not offer that service? Um, but yeah, I mean even part-time you're paying an hourly wage you're paying benefits you're using up resources in the building you have to provide them a computer i already have all that you don't need to pay me anything outside of the 10 hour a month package and so the other work is on an ad as needed basis based on the projects correct so um this is just such a no-brainer. I hope those of you listening to this are, it's really clicking for you going, oh my gosh, I can get all of this work done so I can take on more projects, make more money, do the work that I really enjoy and not have to do all the other stuff. Yes, I want in. So Erica, how yes. do they find you? <laughs> oh, they can go visit me on my website at www.ericagramconsulting.com. And we will have that link in the show notes. Don't be thinking I'm getting ready to say goodbye here because I'm not because okay. I have more <laughs> stuff I want to talk with you about. I okay. just wanted to get that in there because I got myself excited about it. And um, Erica, I think you probably know this about me that I'm really not into interior design and remodeling because I have had the shower curtain behind me up for... <laughs> is literally a shower curtain yes don't go on youtube looking at my shower curtain um for years like five years i didn't even get a new shower curtain 
<laughs> well, I mean, don't look at my background. I just moved into this room that my son vacated when he finally got married um, that I'm turning into my office. So this is still a work in progress. Um, but I'm thinking like some really cool wallpaper on that back wall here and some really pretty pictures and, you know, just so don't mm -hmm. look at my background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you talk about your shower. Well, curtain. and speaking of that, I actually somebody I was on the other day with and OK, this word, you're going to know what this is and I don't really understand it. Is it called an accent wall? Yes, it's just oh. Okay. So it was a really cool wall. And I thought, oh, if I move my office around, I could have an accent wall mm -hmm. instead of a shower curtain. There so now go. I have to, <laughs> so now I have to convince my husband to give up his desk. They never, ever, ever sits at so that I can shift everything around where his desk is now. And I can have an accent wall. So totally. fingers crossed I can talk him into it. I know, I know. Um, and I wanted to go back to a story that I had heard from my girlfriend. She had her kitchen redone a couple of years ago. And oh my gosh, she had all these big plans on everything that she wanted. Marble counters, marble this, new cabinets, new, I mean, new everything, right? Mm -hmm. And she hired a very reputable um, company where she lives and they did all the stuff like you're talking about. And guess what? You're not going to be surprised when I tell you. They didn't measure right and everything didn't fit. Oh, no. Yeah. That you unfortunately know, that... happens quite a bit. Um, how, how long ago was this? Yeah, this was, this was mm, three years ago. Ah, uh, okay. She got it all fixed now. Oh, good. But it took a lot, you know, it was a hassle. Mm -hmm. They had to. You know, they had to redo stuff. It was really a nightmare because her kitchen was, you know, your kitchen is important and her kitchen yes. was totally torn up that whole time. Yikes. So, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> so does that happen? Because I mean, it, she really got a reputable company. It does happen. I mean, we're, we're all human. Um, you know, the adage measure twice, cut once um, should apply to measuring kitchen spaces too. Um, a lot of times when I go out and measure a kitchen, I have two tools. I have my regular tape measure and I have a laser measure. Um, and I double check. I use the laser measure and then I double check with the tape yeah. measure just to make sure. Um, cause you know, kitchens, kitchens are, are, are pretty, you know, pretty substantial and you make a mistake with a cabinet size or even a wall size and the whole thing is thrown off. Um, I've seen that time and time again, it can get, it's an expensive mistake for sure. Yeah. It, it, it you know, she didn't have to pay extra, but I'm no. sure it cut into their profit. Oh yeah. It so does. that's, you know, and it was a hassle for her mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And so, doesn't, it doesn't make the client experience any better when, you know, you don't take the time to, to take those measurements twice at least to make sure that everything's good to go. You know, um, I would recommend the initial measure, design everything, get an approved layout, and then go out and confirm measurements before cabinets are ordered, um, Ooh, just to make sure like that, that everything process. fits the way that it's supposed mm -hmm. to fit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and you avoid those costly mistakes, you know, mm -hmm. so... <laughs> So that makes me think of something else, and, and maybe this isn't part of what you do, but it seems like there needs to be some level of project management happening with these things, too, because when you do redo like a, a kitchen or a bathroom, somebody's got to rip it out, somebody's got to do the measurements, somebody's got to order, somebody's got to do the plumbing or electricity or whatever. Who manages that whole process? Is that you? Is that part of what you do? Well, so I have a client currently, um, he is a remodeler. Um, he came to me by way of a power partner who is a cabinet uh, representative, cabinet manufacturing representative. Um, he, as he was out setting up accounts, this particular remodeler mentioned to him that he needed somebody that had the experience using the design platform in order to get these kitchens designed 
um, so he could use the product. Um, so he came to me by that by that way. And so what I do for him is I go out and take the initial the initial measure of the space. Um, and then I design the kitchen and before the client orders the cabinets, I go out and, and confirm measurements again, just to make sure. Um, but between those two measurements, there's a whole process that's involved that, you know, clients have to tell me exactly what they want in their kitchen, what appliances they're replacing, um, you know, any kind of, are we changing the footprint of the kitchen? Are we removing walls? I mean, there's a lot to this process. So that's why it is so important to get somebody with the knowledge and the experience of design, not just design design, but kitchen design, to make sure that these projects go off without a hitch, or at least minimal hitches. <laughs> Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. So we're talking about you going out and actually physically doing measurements. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you only work with people within driving distance? Yes. Or do you work with people all over the U.S.? Well, I can work with people all over the U.S. I just obviously can't take or confirm those measurements. So um, I have another client. They're designers up in Oregon. They send me all of the measurements that they take that their architect confirms and I design their kitchens based off of those measurements. But then before cabinets are ordered, I make sure that they understand they have to go out and confirm those measurements to make sure these cabinets fit. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So you can work with anybody in the US. How about outside the US? Do you work with people in Canada or other countries? Um, no, because you know, in America, we don't use the metric system. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We have that little issue. So, you know, there's that. <clears throat> there's that issue. Yeah. And then I'm assuming the social media marketing and the administrative services you can do for anyone in the U.S. since yes. that's all virtual. Correct. Well, let's talk for another minute about the social media marketing that you do. What platforms do you use? See, Facebook, Pinterest, what do you, where do you market? Facebook, Pinterest, um, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Oh, wow. Even LinkedIn. I hadn't yes. thought about LinkedIn, mm -hmm. but uh, they are businesses, aren't they? Yes, yeah. they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And depending on what the client's ideal client is, you know, um, not everybody's ideal client is going to be on Instagram. Um, a lot of people's ideal clients, like especially the luxury um home remodelers and designers mm -hmm. you, they mm -hmm. want their ideal clients on linkedin interesting okay okay well i thought maybe it was because old people like me don't even know how to log into instagram <laughs> In, instagram is great for all the <laughs> oh kathy no <laughs> Instagram is great to get your work out there, you know, to, to showcase your work and those beautiful before, you know, those beautiful after pictures. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're going to market in that luxury market, you want to market on LinkedIn. Yeah. Oh, that is so interesting. I love that you know that. Mm -hmm. And anybody who's thinking about, um, you know, how do I get the word out about my interior design and remodeling business? got to be on social media. You yes. have to be on social media now. Yes. You have to be online. And Erica can do that for you. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting there thinking, I hate social media, like I do, or I don't even know how to Instagram. What's that? How do you log in? Um, Erica can do it for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yay. So Erica, let's talk. Um, let's go back a little bit as you were building your virtual assistant business, was the lead virtual design assistant, was that the first area of specialization that you thought about going into? Or had you thought about other areas of specialization? Actually, I had not thought of any other areas of specialization um, because I was just coming off of, of that position at Lowe's. Um, and mm -hmm. I knew that I loved the design aspect of it. Not so mm -hmm. much being client facing, you know, no more dealing with the customers and, and the project management on the backside. Um, but the design part, you know, getting to actually create beautiful spaces 
I wanted mm-hmm. to do that on my own. I just didn't know mm-hmm. how. And mm-hmm. again, when, when your five day challenge fell on my lap, I was like, this is how I'm going to get this done. This is how mm-hmm. I do this. Um, so no, thinking about any other area of specialization has not even crossed my mind. What's crossed my mind like- though is offering more services <laughs> Yeah. to that, to that, you know, um, target, target market. market. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, I will tell you that since I know nothing about interior design, remember the curtain. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> since I know nothing about interior design, when you first came up with that, you know, I thought it was awesome because of your background and your knowledge and your passion about it. Um, but you were the first person in my program that had ever decided to go in that area. And I was so excited for you. And I just see this opening up to just huge opportunities for you and for your clients. So does anybody ever say to you, how are you doing this virtually or question you about this? Yes, actually. Um, I reached out to a general contractor that um, was remodeling the kitchens and bathrooms that I was designing out in San Diego through Lowe's um, when I first started this journey. And I said, hey, I'm taking my business virtual. And he's like, how, how do you even do that? Like, are you going to be traveling to different states to do this? And I'm like, no, you do it virtually. Like you bring me the measurements. You already know how to measure a kitchen. You would bring me the measurements. I would design a kitchen for you. And then you go order the cabinets wherever, you know? Um, I had thought about selling cabinetry, but I don't know that I want to do that. That might be for the future when you come up with some brilliant cabinetry idea. (laughs) Well, I remember way back in 2001 in the pioneer days when I started my real estate VA business, um, people would ask me, well, real estate agents, well, how are you going to take pictures of my property if you don't live anywhere near me? And I'm like, you're going to take the pictures and send them to me and then I will market all of your properties. And they're like, oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So it's really very, very similar and really anything can be done these days. That way. Yes. Yes. So I have one um, question that popped in my head and you know me, I always have to go off on a, a, at least one tangent. So I'm going to go off on one tangent, which okay. is that laser measuring thing. Mm-hmm. You know what that right away made me think of was CSI. Could you like measure? <laughs> have you ever thought about that? What if there was a dead body in this kitchen that I'm measuring? And I, <laughs> I can be like CSI. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Is that what they do? Do they use the same laser, laser measuring thing? I don't think so. <laughs> but they may be, maybe they do. You know, in those it's episodes kinda... where they're sticking the the different yes. things and then they measure. Yeah, that could probably where be. Where the bullet, where the bullet was, where the gun was shot from. What angle was it? Were they standing or laying down or kneeling? I can see you doing that, Erica. I think that's your next career. Woohoo, CSI. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just don't think I have the patience to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know what else? Um, you have a, a story idea here that you could submit to shows like CSI and say, hey, have you ever thought about having a dead body in a kitchen that's being remodeled? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you open up the walls and there's a body in between the walls. Nice. Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I think they've done that one already. Yeah, they have done that. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I watch way too many of those kind of shows. Um <laughs> but I don't have a laser measuring thing, but I might have to get one just to play with. There you go. (laughs) Erica, this has been so much fun talking with you. Is there anything that I did not ask you about that you would want to be sure to share with our listeners? Well, Kathy, your, your Dare to Leap podcast is, is based on the premise that you're encouraging others to dare to leap into something new, something different. Um, I just want to encourage the listeners to don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to try something new. Um, 
<clears throat> you know, like a lot of us that started this journey, we were miserable at our JOBs. I just happened to lose my JOB. But don't get me wrong, I was, I always had one foot out the door because I knew that there was something more out there for me. Um, and and I, I took the leap, you know, I had no fears. And I know a lot of people do have fears going into this. I mean, we see it all the time. You know, they're so afraid of, of what's on the other side, but, you know, it's not going to kill us to take that leap. We're moving into a different working situation not leaping off a mountain or you know <laughs> off a cliff into the ocean it's it's a different working situation you know so I would yeah. encourage the listeners to um be brave take that leap mm -hmm. um it's for your own benefit really yeah. you know mm -hmm. um we were all we were all created to do big things you know and if you are so afraid to take those risks, you're not going to ever know what you were brought into this world to do, what kind of change you could make in the world. Wow, Erica, I oh. love that message that you just shared. You got me all teary eyed here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you so seriously. That was so powerful. Thank you. You're and you're absolutely right. I mean, they're hiding their light under a bushel if they don't take that, yeah. that leap. Yeah. And I also wanted to ask you, you had mentioned that when you worked retail, um, people were mean to you. Mm -hmm. And sadly, that is the situation with people working in retail. We really, really need those people, but yet they get abused mm -hmm. um, verbally probably even physically, emotionally abused um, by clients and potentially by bosses Yes. Um, sometimes. Um, so two messages. Number one, be kind to yes. people that you are working with in the retail industry that you meet when you're going out and purchasing things or purchasing things over the phone. And number two, Erica, how are clients that you work with virtually? They are so different. Um, <clears throat> the they actually acknowledge that I have the experience and the knowledge that they need to make their businesses thrive and they're very appreciative about that you know at first a lot of them are like what's a virtual assistant but then once I start describing and I start talking speaking their lingo and and just sharing knowledge of of my you know the things that I'm, I'm I have experience in they are so appreciative and and it's genuine Kathy it's not fake you know um like these two clients the remodeler and the the designers out of Oregon that I design kitchens for they're like you know this is this is you 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 are the expert in kitchen cabinetry we're gonna defer wow. to you you know, oh, that's awesome. it is, it's a good feeling because I know yeah. that I, that, that I have those skills I, I can bring to the table, mm -hmm. you know, and, and a lot of us, those skills. yeah. And a lot of us always question, you know, what skills do I have that I could bring to the table? You have the skills. We mm -hmm. just are so mm -hmm. beat down in our J-O-B <laughs> into suppressing these skills because mm -hmm. we don't you know they don't want us to outshine the boss or outshine the team oh. lead you know we're mm. we're so told to suppress those skills you have the mm -hmm. skills already so don't question well, what skills do i have to bring to the table you've mm -hmm. got them yeah that's right that's right. Oh, Erica, thank you so much for sharing your message with the world today with interior designers and remodelers. And just as a reminder, if you are listening to this or you know somebody who needs help, uh, an interior designer or remodeler, Erica, tell them again where they can find out more about you. You can find more information about me at my website at www.ericagramconsulting.com and we will also put that information in the notes for this podcast erica thank you so much for spending this time with me today thank you kathy for having me on 
Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.